Welcome to the Hold Maneuver Podcast. I'm Mark. And I'm Mike. We're two hardworking dads trying to immerse ourselves in Star Wars and fit it into our very busy lives. This is your first time listening and or watching. In this sometime short form Star Wars podcast, we'll share our thoughts on different topics from a galaxy far, far away. Hey, uh, guys, what was General Grievous's favorite band? Hmm. What would a robot with asthma want to listen to? I don't know. Weezer. I can do a oh. toilet flush sound sound effect if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was gonna say, speaking of islands in the in the sun, uh, <laughs> there's 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 is there's some islands in the sun in this season of Andor. That's Andor a- eventually uh, will leave this mortal coil on a island in the sun, uh, but until we get there. Welcome back, our returning guest, Giorfi. Yo, Welcome. Ola. Ola from, from Quebexico. Quebexico. Hey, you've been to, you are from Quebexico City. I just came back from Mexico City. That's so it's weird. Like, it's like they're twins or something. Yeah, it's <laughs> sister cities. So yeah, sister that's cities. the one. Sister, sister cities. Yeah. On a two-way yeah. twister cities. Yeah, are, are you from the, the Tia or the Tamara? Uh, city. Oh well, since it's Quebecico and part of Canada, it's a uh, Tia and Tamara. Eh? <laughs> for those and, of you who don't know, that is an old reference. That's yes, a, well, that's one for our '90s kids. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome millennials, or as uh, the people in I think uh, Eastern Europe call it, the Ducktales generation. A yeah. Ducktales generation. I'm, Which, I'm okay I with prefer, that. I think I prefer that to the millennials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, consensus is but, Ducktail hey. generation. It is. Yes, uh, but anyways, I'd be okay with week, Ninja Turtles, but Ducktales will work. Very, very well. Yes, yes. Uh, so this week uh, is episode 32 of the Hold the Maneuver podcast, talking about the season one and or finale episode 12, Rick's Road, uh, which. I can only assume that Rick and Morty will eventually make that their own mm-hmm. title to an episode as well, too. I was just going to say that was the weirdest Rick and Morty episode yet. Yeah, I didn't see. Any didn't pickles. have them at all. Yeah, there no pickles, no, no animation mm-hmm. even. Yeah, or some some bricks though. True. Oh. Two bricks that I can recall. You know what? You know what Marv is. Broken. She's a brick house. <laughs> she, she, she's mighty mighty she's she's letting it all hang out but anyways uh so we don't have uh any news this week or uh any of i am your father story time i have over, one so... i am your father that i can go through oh, because there's this. a great potential that i'm taking my kid to galaxy's edge uh monday great potential nice. Hey, that, that'll be the same day that I will also be at Galaxy with my kid. Maybe episode 33, we should talk about Galaxy's Edge. I don't know. This foreshadowing? If it is, it's terrible. It, it, it's outright uh, just, just saying it, basically. Because <laughs> yeah, I think so... we announced it several episodes ago that we'd be doing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty we'll sure the real... last time I was on Mark, Mark said he was at least going to be doing the Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. And I We've think several finally times. won won the the fight to to bring I did not go win to, the fight. The wallets to. won the fight. That's, That's interesting that, that Disney was cheaper than Universal. I was told it was considerably cheaper. Considerably. Huh. Well, are you just going to Hollywood Studios? No, they're doing Park Hopper. Oh damn. So you're going you're going to Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, and Epcot? I don't know the exact rotation. Nice. Because we can't go to Magic Kingdom until after 2 30 p.m. because Disney said it's too busy. Oh geez. They know it's gonna be busy until 2 30 p.m. four days in advance. Yeah, they got scientists for that. <laughs> and I, I wore the wrong after a season of wearing uh, Star Wars shirts every week, uh, I wore the the wrong space shirt this week. Uh, 
But I did wear I that just, Galaxy's Edge hat. I just wore an Andor colored shirt this week. There you go. I have Andor colored pants on. We'll get there. We go. So I got <laughs> yeah, the the red pants. How about you, Justin? What are you wearing? I was going to say Uberman? Andor uh, Andor themed underwear, but I was going to say, remember this is on uh, YouTube, and yeah, we don't want we don't want to get uh, retroactively uh, de- demonetized in the future when we're hopefully monetized. I don't know. Check out my only flans to find out it's, uh, <laughs> what i'm wearing tonight it's for or, jello enthusiasts jello it, enthusiasts or would it be only cans for canada that's smarter than where i was going with it so yeah <laughs> let's go with that only cans strictly for canadian content yeah it's, it's like it's uh, respectful and polite yeah it's funded by the government where the doors are always unlocked Gives a new meaning like, to poutine. Oh man, so it gives, <laughs> gets you your your poutine routine. Uh, Extra the- sloppy. I'm, All right. I'm, I'm this, a lot scared now. This is this is going to delineate to like a a really oh, bad. Oh man. Uh, so Where before we, we get to that, Where are uh, we? <laughs> let's get the the ever clean minded factor <laughs> segment. We need uh, him so, to bring us back. <laughs> Yeah, so with that, we will segue to Vactor's pre-recorded segment with his thoughts on the and or finale via yeah. World Flash. Well, they did it. I don't know how they did it, but they stuck the landing on Andor Season 1. The whole thing from start to finish was fantastic. One of the best things I've ever seen in the history of Star Wars and my favorite TV show on TV. A little sad that it's over, but I'm very happy that we have all this great content that we can move forward. And I think when we first heard about an Andor series, it was like, why are they doing a character from Rogue One that we didn't even get to spend that much time with? But now that we have this whole first season, I'm very happy and very glad that we got the whole arc and the storyline of what is leading up to Rogue One. So, fantastic work from Tony Gilroy, all the actors involved. I can't wait to see season two of Andor. Yeah, let's go! Woo! Yes. He forgot it's to talk good. about Andor entirely. Like I, he was just talking about blue cereal the entire time and how like he he loved cereal. Uh, cereal is his favorite character. He really self identifies with cereal. <laughs> cereal is a spirit animal. But yes, so this week we're talking about the finale for season one of Andor, uh, and I guess Rick's before Road. we before we uh, really get into it, so Rick's Road is the twelfth and final episode of the first season of Andor. The episode was directed by Benjamin Caron and written by Tony Gilroy himself. And before we kind of like start breaking down the episode, do our usual round robin of just like your first thoughts of i and what you thought about the episode after watching it we'll start with uh, justin and then go to mike and then i'll okay. end it so i i'm coming at this fresh i just finished watching andor finale Jealous. three hours ago three <laughs> hours ago okay from binging the whole series my biggest thing i'm taking away from this is andor needs counseling um i think a therapist would really help him then i'm glad to see the decemberists got work with the musician group (laughs) um third was there's some weird acting choices especially when somebody gets saved and like the reaction i very question Mm -hmm. and four not enough aliens Agreed. I think we cover that many times throughout. Like, although we talk technically, about everyone's all an alien. aliens. Yeah, I want to see like Martian creep, creepy creepers kind of thing. I want my werewolf people. I want more droids too. Just have yeah. like droids in the background. Mm-hmm. Who needs more droids when you have the best droid ever in B two emo? I feel though like every Andor droid is the best droid ever. <laughs> true yeah 
yeah, Cassian only associates with the best droids. He's like, I like UK two SO and I like UB two emo. They had those two aliens, the one who was a lame bodyguard, and then that one who was just kind of sleeping in the hotel room where the money was hidden. They also and had the, the Fisher ones. The Fisher. Oh yeah, true. And, Fisher ones. And those those guys were in Ro- well, not those two specifically, but like that race of alien was in Rogue One. Um, and then we also had uh, the alien from Saw Guerrera in that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Two, two tubes. Two, two tubes. tubes. Finn two two Ola. Yeah. So I with with you, Justin. Really quick. Uh, what since you had that kind of different perspective of being able to like binge like the whole story straight through how did that kind of affect like how you saw the story uh overall as compared to like mike and i that were like watching it from like week to week i i think you might have been better off with the slow burn than watching it all at once because Mm -hmm. i found myself being like getting distracted at points and uh much like much easier because i'm just like well this isn't a big thing because whatever happens is i'm going to get out of it next mm-hmm. episode because yeah. the series got to continue and it's right there right you know have like no need for speculation yeah i had said it and i think a few episodes ago where i thought maybe not binging it as a whole but maybe waiting and binging like the smaller arcs of the season mm-hmm would be a good thing kind of like how they released the premiere as the first three episodes uh yeah and not not all of the season was like three episode chunks there was like there's a bunch of like the three episode arcs but then there was like a one like kind of standalone bridge yeah, was, episode uh, one off and then, like and two off <laughs> yeah and then like this is the last two episodes were kind of like a penultimate and finale that kind of went together as a mm. two act was, kind of thing it was mostly like those first that first arc and then the prison those were the three episode chunks right yeah and then everything like, else was just two story yeah i liked your tweet i saw about uh basically like the whole prison escape uh, episode 10 arc yeah where you're like this is basically and it's just a gif of uh caesar from the new apes movies mm-hmm. which that's what no, that's what i was thinking actor. too is based yeah that's, that's why i, I did it like, yeah i thought that was good but no, yeah it's I was, andy circus was great fan. in this crypto uh like the dog yeah crypto like the dog <laughs> like um, the rock johnson crypto the dog yeah there you go exactly but but it took i took me a minute i was like what the hell are they talking about oh it took so me I there did. too i forgot <laughs> that movie even came out i watched that movie and i forgot it came out <laughs> take that rock we forgot your movie came out yeah like like all your other movies I didn't say that out loud. We just got we just got kicked out of Disney. But you definitely got kicked out of uh, <laughs> Universal. No, Warner Brothers. Which was yeah, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. Bet, they Fast don't have one. Fierce is Universal. Okay, he was well, barely in that. He's barely. But, in he, that. but he, he's well. He's left the main Fast and Furious, and now he's just in the Hobbs and Shaw kind of. Him and Vin Diesel couldn't agree whose bald head was better. So. Who can get over who used more baby oil? Yeah, Adam Sandler's brother. Adam during Sandler's Thanksgiving. Brother. That's a that's a deep cut reference to Adam Sandler's Thanksgiving song. <laughs> uh, look it up. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what it's about on the episode. Just go look it up. <laughs> and or anyways, yeah. So and and a, or let's let's close up these tangents. They're um, everywhere. I actually had a hard time with Andy Serkis because when I see him, I just want to be the villain now. I don't want him to be a good guy. I don't want to be hit him to be like a reluctant character of some sort. I just want him to be straight up the bad guy uh, because he has that kind of face to me now. Hmm. He kind of was the like, villain to like start. Clark. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Because he was like, I'm in prison. You're in prison. You're going to listen to me. We're going to toe the line. But then, you know, love isn't always on time. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Toe the line. 
<laughs> we're except, everywhere except just, like like went off the rails <laughs> i don't think we laid the rails i think it's just gone oh well they happened uh so were those were those your thoughts about the the <laughs> finale just oh, yes uh, those are my thoughts i, I um, can mute them at any time just let me know all right yeah well, i don't know yeah i don't know i have um, no more um, ravelings i kind of forgot where we went <laughs> so how, how about you mike what, what were your thoughts i enjoyed this i wish i could have watched it straight through instead of in like three parts just based on how my wednesday was um it was it was so much to like about it it was solid i was disheartened because my crazy crackpot uh, predictions all fell through so that was upsetting um i was Although, the whole go ahead i was just gonna say part your theory partly kind of came true with marva just not in the same way that you yeah. thought that it was going it, to it wasn't tragic but she had a good ending yeah. and then b2 emo got yost to the side just oh man we'll, when we'll get there i was talk just about happy it, but, that yeah. he wasn't blown up yeah true like that whole there's just some weird like there was they laid a lot of pipe for the next season a lot of foundations they answered a lot of questions uh, it was just a solid. I enjoyed the whole series. Um, I disagree with Andy Serkis because I don't see him as the villain. I see him as just a quality actor in a good role. Um, but then again, I can see why you can always see him as a villain because generally he plays the villain, except in King Kong and Lord of the Rings. And Planet of the he, Apes. He, he played. I thought he was the villain in Planet of the Apes. I thought no, Caesar that was the villain. Caesar's, Caesar's like the, the, the ape. He's the he's the good. Never guy. watched it. I'm not gonna he's lie. The G. Oh man, the human. I, I mean, uh, as we all know, humans suck. So that's why the humans are the really, bad guys. We're good. Yeah. Apes are pure. Besides, where gotcha. there's always the one ape that's physically. I've only seen the original that. Planet of the Apes. That's why I assumed he was the villain. Because oh, they were well, weren't they the villains in the original ones? Hey, it's been a while. As Obi Wan would say, from a certain point of view, uh, <laughs> this but, this yeah, is I mean, not the Planet of the Apes podcast. <laughs> side tangent: those th those are very good. Highly recommend them, though. Uh, um, but Jake I am probably actually at, my favorite sci-fi franchises. And when you said King Kong, I was actually looking at like the 1933 King Kong poster off out to my middle. Oh, of I saw the King Kong stuff over at Universal City Walk today. It's went to my head, but. <laughs> No, there's, it's just, it's funny to me how inept they made the Empire look throughout this whole series, and it kind of comes to a head in this episode with their just inability to predict the little things. Yeah, they made this massive attack on wherever it was with Blevin and Anton Krieger there and without Dedra knowing, but it's just like, they're so involved in their own like self-involved that they can't function as a unit and it was just so much it was so highlighted throughout the series i was looking at things and there's supposedly this political undertone i missed in this episode with cinta so i want to go back and try and see if i notice that uh just overall good setup for the next season um they didn't answer all the questions and the questions i had are still like all the questions I had weren't answered. Some were they a lot of stuff they laid down wasn't answered. So just intriguing, but it just it wasn't like I'm mad about it. It's just like the way they filmed it, the way they wrote it, the way they directed it, the way they presented it. It was it was just so different than what we've gotten from Star Wars, and it just was refreshing because it kind of gives you more meat to hold on to. And I totally agree. Lack of aliens. We talked about it several times, especially the prison. Why they are all in like an all humanoid prison, and there's no aliens in that prison. Like, why is Ferrix basically all humans? Why is it's just? But overall, I I really enjoyed it. Thought it was a quality ending, and it was. I, I wish I could have watched it once or twice just to have more to say about it. 
I've heard some other uh, podcasts that I've been listening to that I've been talking about and or have also kind of um, said the same sentiment like about noticing like being a lot of humanoid characters within the show and not a lot of um, I guess the best way to praise it would be like the a lot of not a lot of cantina-esque uh, variation as like like when we like when you go to the cantina on Tatooine and you see like like a whole plethora of and of different alien species they're chilling out in the bar um so and i think in one of the interviews that tony gilroy did recently he, he said like in the next season there would be more um alien races in there and, and less uh strictly just humanoid characters so that's good to know too uh and i i liked this finale a lot as well too i liked how it was shot like uh kind of like a spy thriller-esque type thing where like since everybody had kind of converged into this like one location finally for this episode mm -hmm. we kept kind of getting these different perspectives on where other people were from other people's point of view so like like when and Cassian was like up in that like the high tower at that one point like how he could see mm -hmm. like where like Dedra was or um I think I think he saw Luthen I, I'm yeah, pretty sure he saw Luthen because that's why he knew to by spoiler alert if you are watching this far into this then you already we've said anyway, spoiler also, like four times so that's on you that's a you know, also I'm not sure who listens to podcasts or watch YouTube videos about episodes before they watch that episode too so that's i mean i'm super guilty of doing that <laughs> well that's all right you're being a supportive friend i just i've seen general all right well, just, i was gonna um... say because i've i've seen you comment on one of the andor videos and then now knowing that you didn't watch andor <laughs> today i, I watch like, the oh. intro stuff and then i'll come back later now watch he watches he, he goes for the dad jokes that's what he goes for yeah, yeah. It's only watches for it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I liked how the watch for your was face, shot. Mark. Oh boy. Oh, oh dang. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna turn my video off now. No, <laughs> I but, can turn it back on. <laughs> I have the power. <laughs> or can you do it? Uh, there you go. Uh, but yeah, so this episode, now we can start really getting into it. First thing I want to say is that before we would get like into this part of the episode but how about when that that imperial dude kicked over b2emo i was like all right this this morose mother effer needs to die because nobody freaking messes with b2emo and doesn't die in the show like if if Did like he, he had like i don't i don't know but like if he had, if he had actually like like broken b2emo and like he that best droid ever died then <laughs> there would have been i would have been like all right not watching season two because <laughs> that would have been an end for him and or worst show ever because of b2 emo died. <laughs> yeah i really so, thought they were gonna blow him up oh uh, we yeah. talked about it last week we thought they were gonna like do something to him and that's when cassian was gonna make k2so out of b2 emo okay yeah. so I thought about that while watching this, and then I got really confused and thought about Solo. As it's like, but then didn't that droid become the Millennium oh, Falcon? Yeah, and yeah, got sidetracked there. <laughs> then he watched Solo, and then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like you were saying, like some of our predictions didn't come to fruition. Like I thought, like maybe they'd come back to the whole. Uh, Cassian's sister storyline. I think end. they will later, way later now. They have to. Yeah, it's I just thought they would. Five story. Maybe it, although, like, I guess. So, what's gonna? Ha what I saw was gonna happen for season two is that when season two picks up, um, the first episode will be a year later from the events of this finale, and then like, gonna jump, already... I think they're gonna jump time way too much, and it's gonna hurt it. But that's just my opinion. Hopefully not, like, because uh, they're going to do the three episode arcs again, I know, um, but within each of the three episode arcs, it's going to be another year leading up to the events of Rogue One, 
So like the first two episodes is four years, so on, so forth. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be kind of cool too, because then it'll be like like four sets of uh like little like short like contained like story mm -hmm. slash movie kind of things. Right. And I know that he's already also said basically like the last kind of shots of the last episode of season two is basically going to be casting like walking off uh to where we then see him walk onto screen in rogue one um, so that should be interesting and then i'm also i th i'm gonna think i think i'm gonna wait well i mean i'll i'll probably watch rogue one again before then but what i'd like to do once this sh season two is over too is like watch season one season two and then rogue one and kind of like see how that all like fits together and how that mm. like feels flow wise but right you finally got to see blevin again after he's been like mia for like i knew something was up with him because like where'd he go for three episodes and i, I gotta rewatch it because i missed the whole freaking thing they like i didn't miss it it was just it was high it wasn't as focused as i needed to be because i didn't know what they were talking about what he did i there was some attack that yeah. but I just missed the, some details, but I knew he was up to something. I thought it was going to be different. Like he hired Cyril to work with Dedra or something, so they could be uh, office romance buddies. Yeah. But. Oh, yeah, like the first like, opening sure. shot of this of them soldering as someone who knows how to solder made me mad because it was just so poor. Like he's just like jamming the thing in there, not paying attention to what he's doing. I was upset by that. That bomb would not have worked, in my opinion. Is that jamming space... the thing in there, not knowing what he's doing? No, nope. space soldering, sir. It's completely different. <laughs> yeah, it's from a it's long, like... long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. You don't know it's if like the space, atmosphere is space the screws the and same? space bricks. <laughs> okay, but when you're soldering. I don't think you need a giant whole thing when you're putting it on a circuit board. It's you just need more both fun. parties' consent. True. True. Speaking of consent, uh, with <laughs> Blevin and uh, Cloris, when they were discussing the the audio recording of Mothma and Perrin's conversation, uh, that the whole scene with Mothma and uh, Perrin in their their vehicle, I liked. I was like, oh, is she is she throwing this dude under the bus? Cause because that's pretty awesome. That's what I thought it was just, that was her solution instead of the marriage thing. I, was just a, like, I think it was kind of like a fallback just in case, like and yeah, kind which of like a, but my initial thing was like, oh, what a clever thing to do. Because Perrin is a knob and we know that. Yeah. I was that just guy. completely like, um, how stupid is this dude when he's just like, oh, they can't hear us. Of course, everybody can hear you. This is Space Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's, Perrin is just, he's the worst. Yeah. Uh, he's but, like Britta yeah. from Community. He's the worst. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, like, we're all over with the references. We're just not going to stop. We're just we're like, going everywhere. Yeah, like Mon knows There was that. like five Star Wars episodes of Community. We can, we can tie yeah, it. it. It fits. I'm not, I'm not mad. Abed would be proud, uh, but like, I mean, Mon knows that like that that driver is already listening to stuff. Like that's already why when she would whenever she'd go to meet with uh, yeah, they had that little that fake have, dialogue have to do like yeah. Um, so I I did, I did like that whole kind of like uh, throwing him under the bus, kind of doing it in a valid way uh, mm. to to do that, and it with. Luckily for her, her husband sucks, and he has like all his like history of like gambling debt and, yeah, and crap. So it's believable. <laughs> so and then it's seemingly like like we said. I don't think that uh, that her daughter was like that was like actually a marriage there. I think that was just like the meeting. Um, well, yeah, she's going through with it, which yeah. indecent proposal was, accepted. Yeah, that was the betrothal meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens with that too. But uh that was that was more or less like the extent of the like Mon Mothma's story within the finale, but I do like how it kind of set ups and 
um, gets us ready for where she'll be in the next season. And we know like next season we're going to see Yavin as well too. Uh, so it should be interesting. Now that's like one of the things I wonder too is like at the end of this, like we see uh, like Brasso and uh, well, during the course of the episode, we see Cassian rescue Bix um, and get her on to mm. this craft as well too. It was so yeah, it was cool. that whole sequence was awesome too with um, seeing Cassian like basically make his way like through the sewers. Being one and, step ahead. Yeah. It also uh, was kind of interesting like all the players on Ferrix know exactly where the other people are hiding all the time. So that dude who's looking to collect his money from Cassian in episode one sells out to the Empire and then gets blown up. Yeah. Uh, so the, one of the other... I'm trying to find it in here, but I remember there was uh, like the... what um, Brasso had relayed to Cassian uh, that Marva had said to him, mm -hmm. which like that was one of the like unexpected things in the episode that like ended up making me cry like listening to it. She, she said, I "Remember like the exact quote, but it was something like, I love you more than anything you could ever do wrong.' Yeah, something and, like that. just like yeah, just like the whole sentiment of like the whole like, thing. I was like, God damn. Um, <laughs> and then like. Like this show has already been great for for speeches, but in this episode we got the audiobook version of of Nemec's manifesto, uh, where we got to hear like his whole thing on that. And well, was it the audiobook or was it just like him reading it and then ha them having do them do the voiceover? Which one was? I think it? So I'm not sure, but like if it's one or the other, either way, uh, it was cool that like how they had it like that um but i liked like the thing in there where he's like the tyranny requires constant effort it, it breaks at least authority is brittle um but that like random where was it, it says the rebellion or, so, uh, da, 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 da. remember the sorry freedom is a pure idea occurs spontaneously and without and instruction random acts of instructions are occurring constantly throughout the galaxy so i thought like parts of that were great too and then i think i had shared it with you but like part of marva's uh speech that she has like in her kind of like self-eulogy that she mm. recorded in, in the hollow mm. it, uh, it has like the whole thing was like like fight these bastards um but then at the end like she says fight the empire and I think we saw or that like someone had said uh, with the show that Disney had only said no to like one thing that they wanted to do on the show. And someone was pretty sure that it was that it was supposed to be another uh, F word. Well, I mean, they said the, the word Empire. shit. They introduced the yeah. word shit to the Star Wars lexicon. So why not the word? I'll say it for you, Mark. I don't care. Well, I was only not saying because I'm not sure of YouTube's <laughs> rules for for that word specifically. So I don't know. But yeah, what what else were some of the things that you guys liked in the episode itself? I'm defer to Justin. I've been talking a lot. I think it was interesting watching the perspective from everybody like going for Caspian, all sides of like who was after him um that chase scene in general was pretty interesting i liked the use of community and music specifically to pull out that um rebellion spirit but at the same like yeah. i make the joke about the decemberist because it just sounds like modern folkish music and right i thought that was really interesting like you could tell what the instruments were like they just modified normal our instruments to make them look spacey yeah like it was just it was kind of it was really cool to have that parade type it's like your nfl procession. marching bands yeah mixed with that a was... new orleans funeral <laughs> true yeah it was 
That was really interesting. I did. I enjoyed that a lot, especially have being being in the marching band. Oh yeah, got got some flashbacks there. Uh, <laughs> some of like some of this other stuff with Marva um, and Brassos too is that I liked when going back to when B two emo got knocked over. Brassos like was the audience there, and he's like, no, nope, f that guy, and he like bashed him in the that, face with Marva, yeah, like <laughs> like. Him, freaking just like smashed him in the face with it um broke so, Marva. he broke her yeah well she she got to throw the the first stone like like she wanted mm-hmm. to do yeah because she she was the first stone where's uh, marva <laughs> where is she why did you say that name <laughs> uh the other thing i liked during like this whole scene too is uh when uh and he's not so I have been calling him the bell ringer, but I guess his like actual credited name in the episode is called the time grappler, which is a really better than cool the name. bell ringer. Yeah, time grappler. But I like that's when, my uh, UFC or that's my wrestling name, man. Well, there you go. Oh, so... yeah, when he like when he, owned it is, now. when he this is Sparta, that storm that was so funny. The, oh my god, the, that was so the awesome. tower. Was, that stormtrooper just walking up and he's just like boot to the face yeah like, what, what was the stormtrooper's plan when he got up there <laughs> like he wasn't even well, why he was, was it only one stormtrooper <laughs> why wasn't it like four going up it's no, the ineptitude it's... of the empire <laughs> yeah That's oh it was so funny <laughs> i thought but, yeah. but that just made me like while i laugh it makes me so mad he didn't get hit in the face with the hammer when are we going to see someone get hit in the face with a hammer in Star Wars now? Two series, two hammers, no bludgeonings. What the hell? Yeah, what was the what was the, the droid's name in Obi-Wan that had the hammer? Ned B. Oh, yeah. Ned B not hitting people with the hammer. Nope. He had every opportunity to do it. Time Grappler could have done it. He decided Ned to use his foot. Disappointment. Ned B disappointment, even though he sacrificed himself. Yeah. No hammer hitting, man. Ned B a good boy. Um, the the other thing I liked in here, well, I thought was so the one thing during like this whole skirmish too is like Cyril and his um his super crappy best friend were all Commissioner um, Gordon from Batman. Oh yeah. No, it wasn't Gordon. It wasn't no, it Gordon, wasn't. was it? it was, oh no, it was like the original commissioner, like that's that's in the um forget his name. Yeah, we talked about it early on. But he but, was in Batman. He was in the Batman. Uh like when so like when um Bix is like I don't remember the, the dude's name, but like there's so many characters, but the, the guy that had run the shop <laughs> that, that they tortured before Bix. Uh, his son uh, that um, who had you didn't like the soldering he was doing oh yeah uh, when he when he threw the the bombs and that um at that and like at that point uh Cyril had had seen that Dedra was there Dedra. so like he like runs I thought for sure him. he was gonna eat it I thought Cyril was gonna eat it and then the more yeah. like the split second later, I was like, "No, this would be like a hero's death, and they won't do that for him." And I got mad because well, I, I, I want Cyril I, I to die. Hoped, yeah, I kind of hoped that it was just that he would just like die randomly in that, and that like it wouldn't be like any kind of like ceremony to it at all. Like, no, so there's like that. There's like that other shot of uh, one of the the town folk that like got shot with like the. Like the blaster bolt uh, by one of the stormtroopers, mm-hmm. and then like, just hold on his face for like five seconds or so. Right. I kind of wish that they had just done something like that with like Cyril, or like he just gets blasted in that. And they're like, oh, that's how he dies because he's not important. He's just running he along and this. dead. Yeah. So I, and then that whole scene after her, like, it was him, so awkward. I thought they were just, yeah. just like making out, and I was like, yeah, it was very weird, tensiony stuff. Like, she was also probably still like heightened and like scared from what was going on. And she already mm. knows this dude's like creepy and has been like, <laughs> like basically following her, stalking and, her, yeah, stalking her and stuff. So she's 
happy that she's not dead, but she's like, maybe I'm still not safe though, too. So that's why like, when she's like, yeah, she's like, I think I should thank you. <laughs> Question mark. Her and Cyril are the same person. She's just successful. Whereas he is not. Where did Who you know that, Justin? Maybe they're split personality. And that was uh, the scene I was talking about that the acting I found interesting in the choice of uh, her reaction. Oh, just because of like all the like adrenaline and whatnot. So like... Yeah. Yeah. There it was weird to me. Um not necessarily the direction I would have gone, but hey. Uh I'm not I'm not armchair Disney. True. Um it's just interesting again, the ineptitude of the Empire on display because she's this tough like ball buster like knows every rule in the book but when push comes to shove and the shit hits the fan what's she doing she's running she doesn't she doesn't know what's going on getting dragged off by the horde and basically almost gonna die immediately because she's just not prepared they have all these rules that they follow but they're not practical inept yeah i still have a hard time with her logic of connecting andor to the rebellion to access to all of it mm. i i feel like there were some jumps for her as a character that she did that yeah. paid off to getting her andor and having like connections because like this is him joining the rebellion yet he's so already interconnected to some parts of it. I think is her whole thing was because they knew so that sure he had interacted that... with the the access person that they were trying to find that they didn't they don't know was Luthan, but I but they knew that he had like interacted with him. But uh, like the way they get there, I I just it was something that always like hung in like the back ground and seeing her always show up for these things kind of was hanging there for me it's just well, i think that was coincidence one... a little bit i feel right to her getting that report for cyril and stuff that like triggers well like, maybe it's connected somehow yeah yeah they, uh... that was like one maybe downfall of the series was the lack of showing how things happen um, I, I want my, you know, Charlie with the board and this twine <laughs> or Hero from Heroes with the Isaac Mendez There's no Pepe print. Silva! There's no Pepe Silva! So I need, I need that a little bit right now. Yeah, that's because they just all of a sudden come back and be somewhere completely forward in the story and you're like, I, yeah. okay. One minute he's getting hired for a job, then the next he's being pulled aside being like, so you know about who did the robbery because you filed this report about a, a murderer mm. what do you know about space bird law <laughs> you're not well versed in bird law but but yeah I, I am curious about like where we'll see some of these characters when it's a year later from where we end with some of them like I had started to say, and then I kind of segued off, but like with the, the whole crew, uh, like with Bix and Brasso and mm. uh, B2MO. Where did he tell him to go? Else. Did he tell him to go to a specific place? Uh, he said... Um, I know he's like, do blah, 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 and I'll meet you there. And B2MO was like, you always say that. Yeah, or I, I don't I don't see... Uh, uh, where it said they were going but um I like i felt bad for like b2 again though because like he, yeah he's, he's like, oh, casting hey what's up and uh, casting's like all right bye. oh wait you're leaving bye <laughs> crap he's like b2 you is gotta... just you know the little brother that has to stay home to take care of the sick parents and uh <laughs> his older brother gets to go and live his adventurous life yeah yeah you know uh, tale as old as time 
and so and then there's some other stuff in here too like i liked like we've been saying it too with like the cinematography uh there's some mm. really cool shots in this this episode that shot of the stormtrooper the lone stormtrooper in front of the hotel with the thunderstorm i thought was just beautiful oh, yeah. it told it told the whole story of what's gonna happen in that shot yeah and there's like the the shot of like uh, cassian like kind of framed in the the doorway of that ship that he was in in the first episode too kind of like mm -hmm. silhouetted with it starting raining there as well too that i thought was pretty cool uh i like that he also gets kind of the drop on luthan and is already like in the ship because he parked in the same spot that he did last time so oh so, cassian's like it's i, I know where parks i'll just go to that place uh and we got Have the pod racer Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think so. Uh, like maybe like part of one, like in like in like the like one of the shops with like the parts and stuff. Sorry, to interrupt. Go, back, go, back. go back to what you're saying. Yeah, I got a gun, 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 gun happy, trigger happy, trigger happy. That's the word. Uh, well, well, the only thing I was saying was that I liked that the flashback. Um, that we got in here too this this show has been good for flashbacks like obi-wan had a few flashbacks in it uh, like specifically like the anakin obi-wan flashbacks there uh which usually you don't really like see flashbacks of Star Wars. so it's been cool between uh i guess uh like boba fett's like back to tank flashbacks that he had and then the flashbacks we had in obi-wan with obi-wan and anakin there and then now the flashbacks that we had spread out and or over like the first episode and like this last episode we had with, mando like, flashbacks too to when he was rescued oh yeah yeah so i guess like this new era of, i guess basically like the disney plus shows is like the first time we're seeing like flashbacks to a different stuff because that i don't believe we they ever did it in the sequel to the trilogy yeah in the skywalker uh, series yeah because yeah, you get the flashback I... of ray being left and Flashback. Those of, almost con considered more to be like visions that she was having, though. Like, visions, because they weren't because like, they weren't like done like in the traditional kind of like like flashbacks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, there was no doom 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 doom. -do. <laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't have Mike Myers come through. Uh, but I liked yeah I liked that scene with Cassian and and Clem. Uh, uh, Clem uh, as, like Cassian's touching the brick on the wall, which maybe is Clem. That's what I took it to be. That was his brick. Yeah, so I liked all these, like, kind of, um, like this more backstory we got with that seemingly is kind of like where Cassian gets his point of reference with, like, how they, the Empire are so uh, sure of themselves and satisfied because basically from the same conversation as he and his adoptive dad had about, like, they don't, like, look down. They just discard stuff and don't like look at it again, right? Um, so they don't notice anything. So I like to that kind of building there, and you can see between like that and then like the um, uh, Marva's self eulogy that she has, like kind of like the building blocks for like why Cassian is the way that he is. Um, so I liked that kind of character building that we kind of saw more with like those flashbacks as well, right. So, um, not really a flashback, but I don't know if it was supposed to be kind of a callback. What was with the hat switching that Cyril and that rando, uh, that dude did? The only like, thing what? I noticed though, there, I thought was maybe just to make it, I don't know, just that because one matched with the other one's outfit better than the other one did. I was just like, I didn't know because they, they tried to make it secretive. It felt those two, not like the director. It was just like, okay, they switched hats, but why? It, because they're dumb. Just because they're like, <laughs> oh, we got to make this look super cool and spy. So like, all right, I'll, I'll take off my hat and you take off your hat and we'll switch them. And then this, the skies. Nobody will know who we are now. Yeah, I was just, I didn't understand that at all. Yeah, that, that was kind of, maybe, maybe it meant something else, but I, yeah, it was, I think it was just because those those two are dummies and they thought they were being smart. <laughs> they are quite stupid. They are yeah. quite stupid. Oh. They're like if Pinky and the Brain were both Pinky. <laughs> Man, we're going everywhere. Yeah, Pinky and Pinky. <laughs> but 
Uh, was there any and, other? Uh, Pinky sounds like a call sign for the pitchforks. Oh no! <laughs> Wasn't that pre-show dialogue? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and was there anything else you guys wanted to, uh, to say about the the finale? Uh, Cinta there killing that dude and then her yeah, and Vel sure. like not being Thank on the you. same page is she more in the rebellion than Vel? Was Vel just like I need money, I don't care? Hmm. That's, that's, I'm just trying to figure their dynamic back because I always thought they were like lovers like forbidden lovers in a way. It's, it's forbidden in the sense that it won't be allowed in China but you know it's it wouldn't be allowed on uh, wherever Vel and Mon Mothma and Baron are from. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, you know, that has arranged marriage and stuff still. So. But, um, no, I think it was just like, you can still have different, uh, you know, political views as your spouse, and some might be more passionate about it. I just, like, it was strange. I was trying to figure it out, like. And she did it's... say that, like, we, I told you when we got together that the rebellion would always come first. I guess I missed Sometimes that. I break broke up viewing, so maybe that's part of the problem. Because the more like Vel started out as this like hardcore person, I was like digging her character, and then the more time went on, I'm like, you're kind of useless. <laughs> uh, just kind of useless. Because she could have gave Mon four hundred thousand credits. She had to have had it. She could have. No way. How would she have that kind of money? She stole it from Aldani. You think that really went to her? That went to fund the rebellion. Yeah, but she knows where it went. She knows where it's hidden. This is before they have a Mon Moth Ma- a Mothma. You, you think that she didn't put it in a pool and Scrooge McDuck that close credits? I, you know, yeah, I think she didn't. <laughs> She's waiting until she befriends uh, Mon Calamari to do that. Because they got the the jelly bucks and it jelly hurt bucks. Much. <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> hey, that's at least Star Wars still. <laughs> that's straight up Mandalorian. <laughs> I'll allow it. It's like <laughs> my yeah, my my Chewbacca just came in. Um, but okay. All right, Sully. No, I'm excited to see where they're going with it. I can't. Um... Next season can't start soon enough for me. It was. Which I don't think it comes out until twenty twenty four. You you mentioned uh, Book of Boba Fett, and that was kind of a letdown series. Obi Wan was redeeming, and then this one just brought it back up to a level where I was excited for more Star Wars again. Like they were reaffirmed a lot for me. I was Disney didn't ruin it a hundred percent yet. I just am glad we didn't find out that Andor was the one that hid Grogu. <laughs> still time. Still time. still time. Yeah, what was what was really cool about this this first season of the show is that it still felt like Star Wars without having any Jedi, any lightsabers. I think this is actually the first Star He Wars had lightsabers on his ship. What are you talking about? Those are like those are just lasers. <laughs> um, like a, and there wasn't any like there was no hilts. jetty using anything. Yeah. There was no hand waving. No, yeah. that's for me now. <laughs> yeah, this this is strictly like the rebel, well, proto rebel alliance versus the imperials portion mm-hmm. of Star Wars. Uh, I mean, there's been plenty of speculation that maybe Luthen is force sensitive. Or why not just like based on yeah. some of the stuff that he's said and done, um, which I mean that could be interesting. We'll see if anything comes from that. He's but just sensitive. I'm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Like when uh, we'll see Melchi again next season, um, after like he kind of departed uh, at Cassian the last episode, um, just because we like we know that by the time I wrote one, he's with. Cassian again and he's like heading up like one of the parts of uh, like their military stuff there so I'm interested to see kind of like what that build up is over like 
the the four arcs that we'll get next season um leading up in that that was last four years before rogue one will we actually get to see force whitaker do anything besides talk be suspicious don't be suspicious don't be suspicious they gotta show him get uh become asthmatic like uh everybody else no they're just gonna do that off off panel sometime well like he's kind of easy to kind of like integrate into stuff too because he's been in so many things now between like the jedi fallen order video game and bad batch and clone wars and rebels um, and rebels that you can you can kind of base it off of where his hair's at and then like what all apparitions he's got like on maybe, his suit at that maybe point. luthan like, well, shoots him or something and that's how luthan dies is in a duel could happen uh yeah, that'll be interesting like you already see like where he's getting like um very even more paranoid uh yeah. with stuff uh just based off of like the whole conversation that they had between luthan and uh i saw in one of the previous episodes um which that re- reminds me of the i i think i sent it to both of you it was the thanksgiving meme of of saw where, where it said boys confections every day more pies yep <laughs> You said that. Yeah. But uh made me laugh. We know who dies because we know who's not in Rogue One and who's not there after Rogue One. So in a sense, we know who dies. They could just be off screen. Yeah, they're, they're at they're like they're at catering. They're, like, they're yeah. yeah, they're like Minkus on the on down that, that other hallway. <laughs> with Mr. Turner. With, with, yeah, with Mr. Turner. Jesus, man, we're everywhere. <laughs> Shout out to our friend Jonathan Turner, who had the same name as the character Jonathan Turner in Boy Meets World. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, yep. It segues back into it because, uh, I don't know, voice acting. Will Friedle, voice actor. Jason Marsden, voice actor. One of them, I'm pretty sure, has done some voice acting within Star Wars at some point. So <laughs> it correlates back into it. Um, you hope they've done some voice acting within Star yes. Wars. Well, I think that will wrap us up for our... <laughs> what a note to end on. <laughs> our and or season Talk one about a finale. brown note. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> burdu, burdu, burdu. Yes, and or season one. Uh, Right now, it is currently my favorite TV series of this year. Uh, I think overall, it's maybe my favorite uh, Star Wars TV series that they've done so far, too. Which actually, it just like barely beat Clone Wars. Mm. Uh, but wait, wait, you can. Uh oh. Shots fired. I'm just saying, Clone Wars, there's a lot more of it. Shots that makes it better. Fired. I mean, well, I, currently, currently, it is that. Oh, my Sylvie is just over here off screen, just making as much noise as possible, climbing over junk and everything. She's like, she's upset with your ranking. Yeah, no, she just, she knows Clone Wars. That's the <laughs> that's the place. Man, Clone Wars is still the best animated Star Wars. No, no, no. And then Andor no, is the best. Oh, man. It is the best. He's about oh, this, to break out the time grappler on you. This this might be a discussion for a different story. So this is <laughs> for anybody watching. This is my current rank. Uh, it's not. We can't easy, see it, but I do like that. Yeah. Uh, that Black Adam is number three. What? From the picture on the screen, it looked like the poster for Black Adam. Oh no, it was, it was Obi Wan. <laughs> oh, definitely. Just see, like, kind of yellow text and black hooded figure. I thought Black Adam. Yeah, so my my current ranking right now is Andor, then Clone Wars, then Obi-Wan, then Mandalorian, then Rebels, then Tales of the Jedi, then the Tartakovsky uh Tartakovsky Danny Tartakovsky uh micro series uh 2D animated Clone Wars, uh then Bad Batch, then Visions, then Boba Fett, then 
droids then ewoks remember you remember droids and ewoks those are the two animated series i remember those getting aren't... a vhs of droids <laughs> when i purchased my vhs copy of episode one those are on disney plus there you go they live that will do it for us for <laughs> andor season one someone's buying a ticket to phoenix to go get into a fight <laughs> nah. uh, well i might seem like i'm gonna throw down the gloves but nah. i don't like to i hate doing rankings so i i don't really i'm a cop out and if if you'd like to see Mike not rank anything, you can check out his ranking of the entire Star Wars films on his I did it channel. for the for views. <laughs> I did it. I'm not, I don't it's like also doing in a it. playlist. It's also in a playlist on our channel because I made a I made a playlist of all Mike's Star Wars related videos from his own channel. Because uh, ranking rankings happen and like if you're in a bad mood, you can rank things poorly. And then you yeah. gotta go back and like hedge your bets. So yeah, that's true. I can tell you what I don't like and what I like. That's true. Who so cares how much I like it? Who cares how much I hate it? Like, you need to quantify yeah. it. We're all quantify. number crunchers here. It's it's all subjective, anyways. So yeah. that's why that's why my whole take on Star Wars fandom should just be that everybody likes what they like, everybody doesn't like what they don't like, and no one has to get upset about people's personal opinions unless they be, become destructive like in certain other cases but as long as everyone is like having you know constructive well thought out like discussions about things that they like and are st still able to be considerate of one another that's like the best thing about having a fandom about anything is just being able to talk to people about stuff that you like and that's why I like doing this with with you all from time to time but i think that's a better note to end on than where we were so for that uh you can leave us a review on the podcast catcher of your choice if it allows you to do so spotify apple Podcasts. uh you can also like this video on youtube if you're watching the video version of it subscribe uh, do all that stuff hit hit the bell uh and then with all of our places you can find us on social media and online uh, those are all in the show notes for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, here on YouTube as well. There's also information for us individually on Instagram and Twitter here in the show notes uh, for myself and Mike. And then where can they find you again, uh, Justin? Oh, you can text Mexico me at, at Twitter and Hive as at Beef Jorfi, G-Y-O-R-F-I. Nice. Uh, and then everyone can find Vector, the other Justin, uh just the better factor. justin hmm. i think it's a it's a tie yeah tie uh and then you can email us at holdapod at gmail.com but then like we always say as always we are grateful to george lucas for creating the star wars universe and mike was muted so thank the maker uh and Hit the button. You did, Sorry. You, you did it just so that I had to say it. <laughs> but that's that's going to do it for guys. So uh, <laughs> that's been our coverage for Andor. And we will see you next episode talking about Galaxy's Edge. What an episode. <laughs> I'm, so on, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> it was fun. It was good times. I hate these headsets. Because it has this stupid dongle with this mute button that's too easy to press. <laughs> It hangs down right where I normally put my hand, and I always hit the damn thing. And it gives me no notification. It doesn't like beep or anything in my ear to say I hit it. Uh, it's got a little red light, but it's like if I accidentally hit it, I don't see it because it's way down. And it was free. That's what I get for using free. Should have stole uh, the headset they used to play that screaming child in from Andor and used that. Yeah. Then you'd be liberating it. That's right. And Andor's all about liberation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>